Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today we're going to be repotting my ficus microcarpa, the one I grew from a seed. I last repotted this tree two years ago and the roots have developed really nicely since then. There's two reasons you would repot a tree. One is health reasons and the other is aesthetics to get that root system nice and radial and gripping the soil. So today I'm going to be a combination of both. The roots have grown so much that it's starting to lift the tree out of the pot. And I'm also going to prune the roots to try and get improve the look of them to make it look like a miniature tree. To support a lush, dense, tropical canopy on top of this tree, you need a lot of fine roots in the soil. So it's only the root tips that take in the water and nutrients out of the soil and transfer it up to the top of the tree. So the more fine root tips that you have in the soil, the more energy the tree can get and so it can support a larger and denser canopy up top. If you have a root system that just has a few thick coarse roots, you can't expect a beautiful canopy up top on the tree. So when you're developing your tree, you need to develop the root system and the branch system at the same time. The two are kind of in balance. The roots on a ficus can thicken up really quickly. A thin aerial root can thicken up in just a couple of years. So you really have to manage your root system carefully on a ficus. I'm going to start the work today by removing all the moss that's grown on the surface of the soil. Kind of carefully picking it away, a bit of root raking to try and see what small fine surface roots I have because the, those are the roots that will develop into nice radial roots, radial surface roots in the future. If you Google ficus trees on the internet, images of ficus trees, You'll see tons of photographs of people standing at the base of a ficus tree there. Yeah, so one of the features of ficus is the aerial roots and the buttress roots at the base. So we really want to be careful developing those so it looks, this small tree looks like a giant tree. The reason that I'm repotting this tree now is that the tree grew all summer, gaining all kinds of vigor. And then I brought it into the cool basement where it had a dormant period. So all those starches it made in the summer have turned to sugar and the tree will be really, really vigorous at this point in time. And now that I brought it up to the warm plant room, it, it thinks it's spring and it's going to grow like crazy. Uh, that's happened on a lot of my trees that I've brought up from the cool basement this year. Once they start growing, they just take off in vigor, really vigorous. So there's a lot of vigor in this tree, so it can take top pruning and bottom pruning at the same time and it'll grow, you know, really well. I place the tree in a boot tray and then it's on top of my spinning tree bonsai turntable. So it makes working on the roots a lot easier if you can rotate it around. And with the boot tray, you don't have to worry about, you know, all the soil going everywhere. It's a little bit neater and tidier while you're working on your roots. As I'm working on combing out the roots, I'm also misting them just to keep them moist so they don't dry up in the air here. All right, I think we're getting close to the point where I can remove the tree from the pot. I've got a lot of the surface roots kind of raked out. A lot of that surface soil and moss removed. So I think, yeah, ready to take the tree out of the pot. All right, here I go. I'm going to remove the tree from the pot. So I'm going to grab it firmly, being careful not to damage any aerial roots. And I think it's quite safe. And then I'll hold the pot with one hand and just lift up like that. And now I can start combing out the roots more, getting down to a deeper level now, now that the pot's removed. In my tool bag, I do have root hooks uh, but I tend to use this root rake a lot. Uh, this end of it is good. It's not too sharp, not too blunt. And it's good for getting in and just untangling roots and that without damaging them. The root hooks are, are fine too. They, they work really well. Yeah, don't be afraid of the sharp looking point on them because, you know, you get into the roots and then you pull and you're not pulling with the sharp point. You're pulling with the rounded part. So root hooks are really good. I've used them a lot on some of the larger trees. 
it's not that the old soil is bad in here that you have to remove it it's that i want to clearly be able to see the root system so that when i go to prune it i can see what i'm pruning it's not just a blind cut someone is going to be sweeping the floor in here again tonight i think that'll be me <laughs> I've noticed that the roots are still dormant. There's no new growth on them, you know, since I brought it up into the plant room, which was just a few days ago, but that will be happening very soon. I've noticed that the roots are still dormant. There's no new growth on them, you know, since I brought it up into the plant room, which was just a few days ago, but that will be happening very soon. It'll be like spring for the tree. You'll get all these new roots growing and all the leaves growing on it. And it should recover quite quickly. I think by the end of winter you'll see a full canopy and new root growth on the tree. It looks like the soil I've used in this is uh, the pumice. Pumice and turfus instead of my usual perlite and turfus. And I, I don't notice any difference. Um, my soil doesn't have to hold fertilizer in it because I water and fertilize the trees daily. I, I put my fertilizer in with my water so you know my soil doesn't have to hold the fertilizer in it and I find this mixture works really well on pines tropicals everything I use the same mix in all my trees and they don't seem to grow any slower than anyone else's trees and you know they seem to the growth seems to be good and consistent I'm happy with that soil mixture so you can see a lot of this fine roots in here. Now I am removing them, but or a lot of them, but they're matted. And if you don't remove them, the root system gets really clogged up and it becomes hard to water. And you don't get that fresh air and oxygen into the soil. It just becomes kind of stagnant. And I don't think your tree will do as well. If you want to slow down the growth, maybe, yeah, but you know, at the moment, I'm not in that stage of the ultimate refinement of the tree. Okay, I think I'm going to tip the tree up now and work on the bottom of the root base. To work on the bottom of your root base, it's always best to tip the tree over so the branches are off the end of the table so you're not breaking branches as you work on the roots. So I can't tip it towards the back, but I can tip it this way. Unfortunately, you can't see the bottom of the root base on camera. So I might have to rotate it around to maybe like this. You can see the bottom of the root base now. And I've got one large drainage screen in here. And you can see all the roots that have grown through the drainage screen underneath it. So it might be tough to get the, the drainage screen out. Okay, there it is. I can clean that up and reuse it. So I'll put that with the pot after I get most of these roots off. So there's the bottom of the root base. I can start combing again, starting in the center, combing outwards in a radial pattern. So if I do rip roots, I'm not ripping my radial roots. I'm only ripping crossing roots. I'll also want to mist the roots to keep them moist so they don't dry out on me while I'm working on the tree. You don't want to rush your root work. Just take your time, give yourself time. You know, don't give yourself half an hour to repot the tree because nine times out of 10, it's going to take you longer than that. So, you know, give yourself a couple of hours, especially, you know, if you've got a tree with a developed root system, it takes time to prune them all. So I'm getting down to the woody part on the bottom of the tree here. So that's as low as the tree can go in the pot, right down to those initial, you know, trunk and root system. If you don't separate the roots, you, you can get them fusing together and then it gets really hard to get water into the system, especially under the base of the tree. So by separating your roots, it keeps spaces for air and water and oxygen to get down there. Well, oxygen's in the air, but uh, yeah. It allows your root system to be porous rather than a big solid plate of fused roots. 
which you know then you have to get your water somehow underneath either by submersion or watering like crazy to fill the pot up with water and then let it drain out because you will get dry places the soil will be dry at the base of your tree unless you get water somehow in there all right it's coming along really nicely if you ever want to get in trouble with your wife or your significant other take your tree up to the bathtub and clean the roots in the bathtub it'll get you in trouble pretty good believe me i know <laughs> I'm going to do a bit of washing of the roots now and I'll use my sprayer here just to kind of clean up the surface roots a bit. I'll put it on jet. This isn't the greatest sprayer in the world, but it still works. Yeah, so I, all these roots will fuse in the future and I'll get this big massive ro buttress root base. Uh, another thing you could do is you could pack all these areas in between the roots with sphagnum moss in here and it would eventually fill up those areas with roots and you'd get you know quite a solid buttressed root system on the tree now i've got we're starting into the root work here i've got this root that comes out nice and radial from the trunk and then it kind of wraps around this root here my vertical root and it kind of hides if i try and get a buttress root system at the base of this root so I'm going to try and untangle it and get it going in a better direction. It may be difficult because it might be fused in there, but that root that kind of goes underneath this other one, I may be able to cut it away also. There's another root here that kind of goes underneath that I gotta pry out. Like, like that where it goes very tangled though okay that's coming out a little damage but it came out okay and then I can straighten the direction out of it kind of tuck it under that root and that solves that yeah I, I don't like this part here I've got to resolve that I'll, I'll show you a close-up of that so right here here's my aerial root that comes down and then I've got this root I kind of wraps around it and yeah they're kind of tangled and I don't think it looks good some tangulation looks good but not in this case so I'm going to have to separate this aerial root from this aerial root so I can kind of start developing a root base under the thicker one and get this end going in a more radial pattern or more radial direction so there's a root from this one that goes underneath here and it looks like it could be quite fused in there I'm thinking so I don't know where it goes but I may have to cut it off there I don't want to damage this other root too much I think I've separated it there. Gotta take all my roots with it. Sorry about my hand in the way, but okay. Getting there. Still attached somehow. There. Okay. So that root is separated. And you can see this is the old root from it, so I'll try and get that out right there. And it'll be wrapped underneath here. There, I got it pulled out. So now you can see a little bit more of the radial root system of the aerial root there now it is damaged a bit where I've cut here but that will heal let's get it trimmed up a bit more like that yeah so there's a nice radial root system developing off of this one now there is this major root on this side which is too thick 
I, I like this area of it, but not up here. So I'm going to remove this root. So I'll come in with my branch pruners on that one because there's a nice root here, but I don't want to have this thick one. It's too thick. Um, yeah, I better remove it totally. Like that. So there, there was a root below it that's in a nice radial pattern that's thinner, much nicer. Now the question is, what can I do with this other root? I can straighten it out a bit. Sometimes when roots are curved like that, you can kind of get them with your fingers and straighten them out. And it injures the root a little bit, but it does work. Kind of gets them straightened. The lowest part on the root base is right here. There's a woody spot here, but I don't know. It looks like it's healed over. I don't really want to, you know, open a wound up on the bottom of the tree. It might start rotting up the trunk and eventually you get a hollow trunk. So I don't really want that. I think, you know, I'll just prune away some of the roots in the area and accept that's as flat as I can get the tree in the pot. Someday this tree will have to go in a larger pot. It'll keep growing. Yeah, so that's my lowest part of the root base. I'm going to give the root system a final comb out and then we'll come in and look to try and kind of balance the root system, prune back some of the thicker roots, um, give the roots ramification, change of direction, you know, all the things that make a root base look good. Out front here, I have an aerial root that comes down and then the root that comes off, it kind of comes a bit too horizontal. There's some nicer roots below. So I'm going to prune that one off. So here I go. Like that. So I, now I get a nice smooth flowing roots that go down into the soil. Over here on this root, it comes down and then I've got two roots coming off of it. The first one's quite nice, it flows nice, but this one could be removed. So I'll do that. Well, I got half of it removed. My precision scissors like that. Yeah, there goes the rest of it. So that looks better now, there. Now that exposes a crossing root here, which I can try and sort out. Maybe more like that. Another one down here I can untangle. On this root here, it comes down and divides into two and then this one doesn't look good. So I'm going to remove that one. Just like your branches, you want one root to divide to two, and two to four, etc. That's got that root fixed up. Um, got this aerial root comes down and then I've got you know what I call a pom-pom root where one single root comes down and then it suddenly divides into a lot so I think I want to sort that out this roots good and they're all good roots this one kind of continues along the straight line so I'm going to get rid of the thickest part keep the other roots so like that it's just as important to do the back of your roots because you know this might become the front someday you never know so you don't want to neglect the roots on the back I've got a bit of a bulge here I'm going to remove on this root like that and I've got a kind of a root that sticks up here uh, right here comes out horizontal that's got to be removed so I'll take the two little roots off at first and then I'll carve away there's another root attached to it and then I'll carve away the part that's sticking up like that and 
I got to get in a little better than that. So now I got to get in there. It's not the greatest route, that one. I may have to come in with my little scissors and okay. I need my little knob cutters. This will do it. Yeah. So just getting rid of that root that was sticking out too horizontally, it didn't flow down nicely into the soil. And that could be a problem, you know, if I raise the root base up someday, you get that ugly part of the root base sticking up. Right in here, I have this aerial root coming down and then there's a root it goes in towards the tree and kind of down and snakes around. I don't think it's very good looking. And I, I think it's going to become more of a problem in the future. So I'm going to have to remove that. So here I go. It'll also cause this root to thicken up dramatically if I leave. All right, here I go. So that's off there. And then I can pull it out. Hopefully. There. Sure was intertwined with that root. Okay, there. That root's out. And now I can reposition this one back in place here. You gotta be fussy with your roots. You want a beautiful root system. You gotta really look at it. Just as much as you do for the branches of your tree. Examine it sort it out and to make it look more miniature. I think we're getting really close here. Now I'm going to clean the pot up and we'll test fit the tree in the pot and I think I'll have to prune away a lot of these long roots on the outside of the root mass just to bring it back a bit so there's a space between the edge of the pot and the roots to allow for new growth. I'm trying the tree out in the pot and you can see uh, it fills it in some. So they're going to need pruning back. At least, you know, a couple of centimeters. I'm going to start the reduction pruning, getting the, you know, the edges of the profile of the root base in. And whenever I see this straight section here on this root, it divides out here. And if it divided earlier, it would be better. So I'm going to prune that off there. Like that. And then I'll get divisions a little earlier on that route. This one too, it's very straight. So I'm going to prune that back here. Like that. This one too, very straight. Prune it back. So it's not just a matter of going around the edges and pruning it. And you don't do that on the branches of your tree, so you don't do it on your roots either. You're pruning for, you know, getting even ramification, good subdividing. Here's a root here that doesn't really divide until way out here. So that can be pruned back. If a root's getting too thick, it can be pruned back. Here's a root here, it comes off this root. It's very straight with no real subdivision until right at the edge of the pot. So that needs to be pruned back. Like that. So now I'll try it out in the pot and see how it's fitting. I've got the nicest side of the pot to the front here. If I look on the back here, there's a little pinhole defect in the glaze. Other than that, there's not much difference. This is a nice Japanese pot. 
It's one of the first pots I ever bought that was brand new. And it was half price in a really nice bonsai store. I got a set of two of these pots. I have a larger one that my dwarf Schaeffler is in and this one that my ficus is in. So yeah, really nice pot. These pots are probably at least 25 years old now. There is a maker's stamp on the bottom. And I've got the front of my tree. Well, that fits in there quite nicely. I'll show you a view looking down. There's a view looking down. So you can see there's space all the way around the pod. It, uh, you know, there's quite a bit of room for the roots to grow. So I think that's going to be quite good. So I don't think I want to change the position other than making sure I get the tree upright. I don't want to change the position of the tree in the pot. It's at a, you know, nice offset from the center and front to back is good. So I think it's ready for planting. I will put a base layer of soil on the bottom. I do want this woody part right on the bottom of the pot to get it as low as possible. I think, I think the height, yeah. I don't want to raise it anymore. It's definitely, definitely high enough in the pot. All right, let's get a base layer of soil in the pot. So out comes the tree once again. And the woody part is here. So right about here, I don't want any soil. So I'll kind of mound it up around and leave the part, woody part of the roots right on the top of the pot. All right, here I go with the soil. And this is half perlite and half turfus, 50-50 mix. Okay, I'm going to try positioning the tree now. All right, here I go. So kind of equal in the pot, sort of about there. And then I'll check it, make sure the tree's upright. So it's definitely on the bottom of the pot and I could use a little more soil on this side just to bring it a little more vertical. So the tree's leaning forward. If you look at it in the side view, it's coming towards me a little too much. I want it vertical. So I'll start adding soil and kind of working it into the roots and that'll stabilize the tree in the pot. I will need a bigger pot for this eventually. It's starting to look too small. So I think it could be a little deeper and a little larger. So I'll keep my eyes out. I'll keep looking around for one. Yeah, over on this edge, I've got a lot of roots that are just kind of popping up out of the surface of the soil. So I may have to put a rock on top to hold them down until the roots begin to grow back into the soil again. Kind of like that and then cover them up a bit and then they'll grow down into the soil and then I can take the rock away. So I need to find some stones and I, I don't have many in the plant room here. I'll have to borrow some off other trees. Okay, I better use this rock. I better use the large rock. Hold it into the soil. And then get these roots into the ground here. That's going to hold them down for sure. This one could use a bit of a rock on here too, I think. Like that. I'll look a little ugly for a while, but you know, and I'll have to pile the soil up a little high here. There's a root sticking out. Got to keep that in the soil. So once all these roots get established, I'll rake away this soil that's a little high. I think my Natal ficus is stable enough in the pot that it doesn't need them. Thanks Natal ficus. Yeah, that'll do. Just the right weight. Okay, so a little more soil in here. And I'll remove all these rocks eventually. It won't take too long. Once the tree starts growing again, I, I would say, you know, a month of good growth and all these stones can be removed. I'll put the tray back underneath the tree and then I'll water it to settle all the soil in. Then we'll take a final look at it. All right, here I go with the water. All 
All right, that's pretty good. I'm going to do a final check over, making sure the tree is in the pot nicely. Seems to be okay that view. I think, let me check. Yeah, it looks nice. If anything, it's very, very slightly tilted towards me, which is probably good. Ah, it's pretty vertical. From this view, looks grand, looks good. Yeah, I think it's in a good position. All right, I'll get it out of this tray and we'll come back and have a final look at the tree. Well, after a five part series, here's the final look at the tree. I'll spin it around so you can see it from all angles. So here I go. Front, coming around to the right hand side. So I'm really glad I got those roots sorted out on this aerial root. I think that's gonna make a great root base around here eventually. Coming around to the back of the tree and coming around to the left side. There's the left side and back to the front. So again, all these rocks will be removed eventually. They look all right with the tree, but you know, you'll see that nice smooth transition from the trunk coming down the roots and into the soil. So yeah, the tree's good and firm in the pot. So after care, I'll just keep the tree misted well, keep the soil moist, not soaking wet, but keep it nicely hydrated and uh, just wait, wait and see what happens. Um, I'm sure the buds will appear and then it'll start growing slowly and by the end of winter it should look like a tree. It's so nice to have the sunshine in the plant room today. There's a look at the tree, how it fits in the pot, the upper canopy. In this video series I've taken steps to further improve the quality of this tree and kind of bring it into the future so it becomes a grand old ficus tree. And that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.